The movie begins with a girl named, Cairo. She lives in a wealthy neighborhood in Tennessee. She's on her way to school, and every day she takes a shortcut through the woods. The scene changes to a high school English teacher named, Mr. Miller. He's getting ready to welcome his class in which Cairo walks in an hour earlier, she introduces herself since it's her first time attending Mr. Miller's extra classes, she tells him her friend Winnie recommended his class, in which Winnie walks in and starts a random conversation with the two. Winnie states that Mr. Miller's class is boring compared to the other classes, they walk out to go grab breakfast. Mr. Miller is visited by his colleague Mr. Fillmore, he offers him cookies and makes fun over the fact that his female students prefer reading explicit books rather than informing ones. We meet his wife Beatrice, who's an author, he tries bonding with her but it's clear she's career driven and is focused on her work, he puts on music to distract her and gives her a glass of wine, which helps his advances with his wife, and the two get intimate, but unfortunately her phone rings and it's her publisher, forcing them to stop. The next day, he's recapping his weekend with his friend telling him that there's lack of intimacy with his wife, which Mr. Fillmore says that is bad, the two see Cairo from afar walking out the woods towards them. In which they ask, isn't she afraid of walking in there alone? Mr. Miller then asks her what is she listening to, she tells him she's listening to an old musical artist, in which Mr. Miller thinks that's impressive because girls her age would never. At Cairo's house, Winnie tries convincing her to try seduce Mr. Miller out of fun, Cairo asks her how would that be an achievement, and says it's just to gain an experience, but Cairo doesn't think that's morally right, Winnie doesn't care about that. But to get his friend to live a little, she tells her that Mr. Miller sees her and everybody at school is noticing that, and maybe she could inspire him to write again, since he used to be a writer before teaching. In class, she thinks about it, since she used to be a fan of his writing, they share glances clearly sharing sexual chemistry between each other. After class, she sneaks up on him dancing, he asks her what she wants, and she says she's waiting for Winnie, they have a conversation about poetry. In which Mr. Miller sees that she has a genuine interest in the art and invites her to a poetry session where poetry lovers share their poems, she gladly accepts the invitation. At the bar, Mr. Miller, his wife and Mr. Fillmore have drinks and recap their days and Mr. Miller tells them that Cairo is a talented young lady, telling them that she has an old soul which gives her an advantage in understanding poetry. Annoyed by how much he's praising the young girl, his wife tells him that being a teacher suits him, rather than being a writer, and that is why their marriage is mundane, she continues saying she fell in love with the writer, not the teacher, visibly embarrassed by her. The following day, Cairo goes to the poetry session where she's noticing the individuality of the people, Mr. Miller walks up to her asking if he can sit down, they listen to a man's poetry in which he speaks on hope and heartbreak, after the session, Mr. Miller asks her opinion on the poetry she was listening to, she says she never thought she would be this impressed, they share a cigarette and she looks in his eyes, clearly planting something inside of her teacher. At school, Winnie asks her how her date went. She changes the subject and she tells her she needs to go to Mr. Miller's class, she walks in on him packing, he tells her he's going on a vacation with his wife, visibly jealous, she tells him to give her an assignment, on an explicit book but he tells her he's not allowed to guide her on such, she tells him it'll be interesting if they dived into it, seeing that he's behind on time, he rushes out, having to take Cairo's phone by mistake, Cairo searches for it and has Winnie call the phone but unfortunately there's no internet connection. When Cairo gets home she calls her phone again and Mr. Miller's confused to whose phone it is, he picks it up and on the end of the line it's Cairo, telling him that it's her phone and she needs it immediately, Mr. Miller agrees to stop by and give it to her, as he drives to her town, the rain begins hitting, he arrives at her house, she comes out wearing a silk dress waiting for him to walk up to her. Clearly mesmerized by her beauty, he tells her to come to him, she follows his instruction and they share a passionate kiss. Having sparked something in her, she dwells on the kiss, and at the Miller's residence, Mr. Miller feels the same way, his wife notices his changed demeanor and tells him that she feels as if something is wrong, and that affects her writing, Mr. Miller tells her he'll give her some space, in which she thinks it's odd, he goes to the storeroom outside and continues texting with Cairo. She sends him her poetry which she wrote about her fantasies she has with Mr. Miller, saying he came over her house and and had a passionate experience with one another, going into extreme details with what happened between the two characters, Mr. Miller can't help it but self-pleasure himself. The following school day, she walks through the woods going to school, she gets to class early and Mr. Miller walks in behind her, visibly upset, he tells her she needs to choose another author, saying it's not appropriate and she says she wrote what she knows and what she knows is them. 
He disagrees and tells her that it's not allowed and he won't accept it, but she challenges him by saying she can see through him and can tell that he has developed feelings for her. He argues back and calls her claims nonsense, he calls her a child, clearly breaking her heart. She argues back by saying that he created her fantasies by inviting her to poetry sessions and involving her in his life. He ends the conversation by saying he is her teacher and she's his student, clearly shattering her fantasy. She argues back by attacking his failed aspiration of being a writer by saying he wasn't brave enough to chase his dream and attacking his masculinity. She goes to see Winnie and drinks her heartbreak away. Winnie is shocked to see that she had genuine feelings for him. She asks if she's still in love with him. She gets emotional and says she wants revenge. But for now asks Winnie to text her guy friends for her as she wants to forget what happened in the day, but Winnie texts Mr. Fillmore, being coached by Cairo. She texts him explicit details of what they're doing together, using her talented wordplay. She goes into detail of what they're doing, clearly exciting Mr. Fillmore, but he quickly fights off his urges and tells her to go to bed. Cairo tells Winnie to take off her shirt, she asks her why, and she says they are going to make out, she records the explicit act with her friend. She pushes her away and tells her to send the video, clearly having deviated a plan in her head. She gets someone to send the explicit poetry to the principal and immediately, she calls Mr. Miller's residence and his wife picks up, and she gives him the phone, hoping not to get the news he thinks he'll get, he picks up, and Miller tells his wife everything that the principal said, and tells her the principal wants to speak with him in person. And Miller says he believes if she can convince the principal that something happened between them he'll lose his job. But his wife says if there was something that happened she'll lose her too. At the principal's office, the principal interviews them alone. She asks Cairo how did their relationship begin. She asks whether they've been together outside of school before. Cairo says yes and Mr. Miller says no. She tells the principal that he came to her house before and she was alone. And when the principal asks Mr. Miller this, he says he mistakenly took her phone home with him and he had realized that later, and decided to drive down her house to drop it. Mr. Miller argues that he didn't have any physical contact with her. In which Cairo says they had, and manipulates the principal by saying it wasn't okay of him to do that. Shocked, the principal looks at Miller differently, clearly with shook and disgust. The principal had made up her mind on who she thinks is telling the truth. He gets suspended, and he's forced to tell his wife the news, and she demands him to tell her the truth and he lies to her and says nothing happened, but his wife doesn't believe him and they argue back and forth about it, insulting each other and ironically insults his failures of being a writer too. Clearly breaking him more, Winnie visits Cairo asking what is she doing to Mr. Miller, seeing that she feels bad for him, Cairo says she's testifying against him and she asks why, she says he underestimated her, Winnie asks her if she's okay, but she answers her by saying she's inspired. She begs her not to do this. She asks why. Winnie tells her that this is real life and she'll ruin his life. Clearly showing she doesn't care, Winnie steps in and says she'll testify against her. Cairo says if she does that she'll show everyone that she is flirting with Mr. Fillmore and says she has all the evidence stored for when she tries to step in. Realizing that she played her all along and she was just a pawn in her game of chess, she breaks down repeatedly telling her that this is not a game, but trying to convince Cairo otherwise, is like talking to a sounding board. She reads Winnie her poem going into detail about every event, clearly seeing that she planned this all along. Make sure to like and subscribe for more notifications. Until next time, see you soon.